Very good morning friends. So I hope you are all doing fine, safe and healthy. Well, I have been getting a couple of requests that you know, so why don't you make some videos on IND AS113 which talks about fair value measurements. And of course it's a very interesting standard because the computation of fair value has its own challenges. So what I'm planning is that I'm going to make a series of videos not a video, but I said a series of video on India's 113, giving you first of all some concept, building concepts on this, and then we go to get into some core concepts related to fair value measurements. Well, in the first instance, what I have done, I have developed the overall framework of this particular India's into what I call KB's three-step model. So I've divided the entire Indus 113 into a three-step model. Let's find out in detail. An academy पर मैं आपके साथ लेके आ रहा हूँ इस मंथ जून के अंदर जितने भी CA final financial reporting के अभी तक CA institute ने RTPs release किए हैं May 18 onwards new course के लिए उनके आपके साथ एक detail discussion करेंगे special classes के अंदर. और आप इन सेशंस को एब्सोल्युटली फ्री देख सकते हैं बस करना आपने इतना है कि अन एकेडमी ऐप को डाउनलोड करना है और मेरा कोड इस्तेमाल करना है सीए के बी टेन इससे आपके पास इन सेशंस को पूरा फ्री एक्सेस मिलेगा अनलॉक करके तो आइए हम इन सेशंस को आपके साथ मिलकर इन सारे आरटीपीज़ को सॉल्व करते हैं सो लेट्स क्रैक इट वल एज आई सेड that the entire Indus 113 can be seen in terms of a three-step model. It's not that I would claim the copyrights to the three-step model, but even if you look at the Indus 113 text, you will see that it is very clearly mentioned that the standard is dealing in terms of three things. One is, it gives you the definition of what is a fair value. And the second step is it tells us the framework in terms of how the measurement of the fair value takes place. And then finally, there are certain disclosure requirements related to fair value. Now, I'm not going to get on to the definition of fair value at this stage. I'm not going to take you directly to the three steps of fair value at this stage. What I'm going to do, as I said, I'm going to first build a few concepts before we start digging into the definition of a fair value. Well, at the first instance, let me first of all tell you what does this standard actually deals in. So I made a total of two charts on this particular aspect. Well, the first clarification chart, as you can see, is dealing with what I call technically scoped in. You know, when you look at the scope of the standard, we can always say that the standard scope, you know, tells you that what is covered by this standard that is called scoped in and what is not covered by the standard and that's what we call scoped out. Now technically if you ask me in terms of the clarification chart number one it's not that I am only dealing with scoped in it's a little blend of scoped in and scoped out. Now there are two important questions which arise in the mind when you consider the fair value. Number one how do you measure a fair value? And number two, when do you measure a fair value? Does Indus 113 deal with both these questions? Well, the answer is no. Well, if you say that how do you measure a fair value, does Indus 113 deal with this particular concept? The answer is yes. It gives you in step number two, the framework in terms of measurement of fair value. And not only does Indus 113 deal with the measurement of fair value at the initial recognition, but also at the subsequent measurements. But the next question is, when do we compute a fair value? Well, Indus 113 does not give you any guidance on this. You can say Indus 113 gets triggered only when some other Indus tells you to calculate a fair value. Generally, I would say that whenever any index uses a reference to fair value, except in few cases, which we'll see in scope number two, we need to compute the fair value in terms of 113. So whenever a particular index would require that we need a computation of fair value, like for example, when you look at index 16, when you look at index 38, 
we need a fair value determination or even in days 40 in terms of the disclosure of the fair value then in day 113 gets triggered so we can say that in day 113 deals with how to measure the fair value the computation the framework but not when when is supposed to be covered by the other index now the second clarification chart is totally dealing with the concept of what we call scoped out now, the scoped out section can be further divided in terms of two sections. One is that there are certain areas where this standard is not applicable in totality. Mainly, you can say the standard deals with the measurement and disclosure in step number two and three. So, one area is that the standard is not applicable. So, neither the measurement principles nor the disclosure requirements are going to be applicable. But then there is another area where the measurement principles are applicable, but the disclosure requirements are not. So, indirectly, I am showing you the scope of what is given in India 130. Now, if you look at the first portion, that is the areas when both measurement and disclosure requirements are not applicable. We are given three areas. One is Indus 102, which talks about share-based payments. And if you recall, if you see whenever the reference to the fair value goes in Indus 102, it makes a very clear-cut, explicit mention that this fair value determination is not as per 113. Even in terms of Indus 116, which deals with leases, the calculation of the fair value is not as per 113. And then there are certain values in Indias which are not fair value, but they are values which are similar to fair value. Like for example, when you deal with Indias 2, it talks about inventory valuation being taken at cost or NRV, whichever is less. Like for example, when you look at Indias 36, which deals with impairment, it talks of calculation of a recoverable amount, which considers the concept of what we call the, you can say the fair value less the cost to sell. Now, these kind of values, you know, have something which is similar to the fair value computations, but they are not covered under India's 113. Then, as I said, the second area is where the measurement principles of India 713 is applicable, but the disclosure requirements are not. And these are typically the two areas. One is the area of India 19, which talks about the plan assets being measured at a fair value. And the second is when you are making your calculations as per index 36, which is with reference to the calculation of what you call the fair value less cost to sell or what we call the fair value less cost of disposal. Now, this, these areas, you can say that they are scoped out of the requirements of the disclosure. So measurement requirements would apply. So they are values which are not fair values as such, but they could be values which are similar to fair value. So to begin with, this is a mere introduction in terms of fair value, where our thought gets triggered in terms of, you know, what is covered by this particular standard. So the most important conclusion what I can give you at this particular stage is that India 113 gives you the framework for computation, not the triggering point when to compute. It is the other index which will trigger when we apply this particular standard. So we're going to meet with some more videos on this. Stay tuned on this. And I'm going to cover a lot of concepts on India 13 in the coming videos. Thank you. Take care and bye-bye.